The new ROG Raikiri is one of the most customizable game controllers currently available. To help you get the most out of your new gamepad, we have a step-by-step -step guide to explain each of the features. Let's begin by installing Armory Crate, then connecting the Raikiri to your PC. Make sure to install any updates before heading over to the device list. The device info page gives you a clear overview of the current settings, such as the range of motion and dead zone on the hair triggers and the joysticks. The response curve, which indicates the behavior of each joystick, the button assignments of the rear paddles, and the intensity of the haptic feedback. To modify any of the settings, simply click on any one of the arrows. They serve as direct shortcuts. In this guide, we'll explore all the settings available starting with the triggers. The analog triggers play a vital role in gaming. How they are customized depends on which games you play. Full range of motion is available. However, whenever you want, that or not is a different story. In first person shooters, it may help to establish a dead zone so you can rest your index fingers on the triggers without worrying about inadvertent presses. The amount of dead zone depends on how tense or relaxed your fingers are. So play around and find out for yourself. Select the left trigger by pressing it. Click on the start value and test the range of motion and you can feel the tension on the trigger increasing linearly. This aids muscle memory. When you find the sweet spot, press X to confirm the start value. You may try a few times and press A to finalize and save the setting to the controller. If you're trigger happy, then by all means set it to 1% and let the bullets fly with minimal delay. Exact values can be entered directly if you wish. Having full range of motion is ideal for racing games, where precise throttling and braking are the key to winning. Remember to release the trigger locks at the back of the controllers when utilizing analog. The end value determines how far the triggers need to be pressed until reaching max input. Keep in mind that anything past the threshold is still max. Restricting the range of motion can work well for racing cars lacking power. And speaking for myself, gives a peace of mind whenever I am paranoid that I may not be at full throttle. Slow cars tend to give you such doubts. When you have defined both the start and end values, then you should remember to press A to save the values to the controller. Many people prefer a balanced feel for the triggers since one is a point of reference for the other. After assigning one trigger, use the mirror function to quickly apply the same setting on the other one. After the triggers are set, it's time to do the same with the joysticks. These are even more customizable and the response curve makes the setup process easy. There is no one curve fits all when it comes to sensitivity, but with a little tuning and game time, you'll discover the perfect curve for you. The response curve for the Raikiri consists of three key attributes, which are highly customizable. The dead zone, main curve in the middle, and the outer threshold. The dead zone here defines a circular boundary where the joystick can move freely without any input registered. Applying a dead zone of 10% means that no input will be registered unless the joystick moves at least that much from the center. Typically, you want little or no dead zone for most precision in games. However, there are exceptions such as racing. It can be hard work trying to drive in a perfectly straight line without a dead zone because every minute movement is making you drift from side to side increasing the likelihood of losing control of the car. Outer threshold is the same idea as dead zone, except it applies the outer limits of the joystick movement. If for example the outer threshold is set to 90%, then maximum input can be reached as soon as the joystick moves at least 90% from the resting position, as opposed to the usual 100%. This is like setting the endpoint for the trigger, reducing the distance required for the analog joystick to go from zero to max. Set inner and outer limits first by adjusting dead zone and outer threshold. The four plots on the curve may need to be shifted if you wish to try larger values 
for dead zone and outer threshold. Once those two limits are defined, then it's time to play around with the curve characteristics. In the list, there are three preset curves and two additional sets on the list are for your own customized curves. The linear curve is frequently used for any games where you're controlling the camera view or characters moving. You can see from the response versus movement graph that it's easy to predict how much response will result from every incremental movement of the joystick. Gentle can make it hard to keep up with a fast target, but great for aiming, since the input will be slow at first and accelerate as the joystick approaches the outside threshold. Rapid, on the other hand, is instantly responsive, but hard to control when just starting out. We suggest to try out Gentle or Linear, then work your way up. The Raikiri allows you to increase the responsiveness gradually as you become faster, as you become a master. Most games provide the option of inverting the X or Y axes, especially flight sims and FPS. These settings are here in case the games don't have them or force you to play inverted. With all the analog controls sorted, let's look at the buttons. You might have noticed the Raikiri provides two extra paddles on the rear, M1 and M2. While many controllers have them directly under your fingers for fast actuation, sometimes it's possible to clinch too hard and press them accidentally. For this reason, the paddles on some controllers may be hard to press. The design on the Raikiri lets you choose whether you want to rest your fingers on them or not, and actuation is easy. The paddles can help you accomplish more. Map one of the joystick clicks or the ABXY buttons to the paddles in case your thumbs are preoccupied with the joystick. If your index fingers are always on the triggers, then map LB and RB to the paddles. The Raikiri has an exclusive feature which allows you to alter the left or right joystick sensitivity. This can be tremendously helpful when aiming with a sniper rifle or when moving slowly to avoid falling off a cliff. With this function, a second response curve can be applied to each rear paddle. For example, in FPS games, the right joystick is linear by default, then we assign gentle as the second response curve on the M1. While in games you can use linear when your roll is changing the view angle, then hold and press M1 to switch to gentle for precise aiming. For immersion, the Raikiri offers four haptic feedback zones, one in each corner. The ideal intensity of vibrations depend on the games and your own personal preference. Some may prefer low or no vibrations in FPS since they may throw off your aim. In racing games, it's essential to feel the road surface, the car, and amount of grip. The only way to know what you like is to try it out for yourself. You can do this by dragging the slider from left to right. The increasing intensity of the vibrations in the selected zone can be felt accordingly in real time. Now you know how to set up the Raikiri and play your favorite game titles. Don't forget to apply aura lighting effects to match your rig. Thanks for watching and let us know in the comments which features you'll be testing first on the ROG Raikiri.